One of the, uh, the components of, uh, uh, of the drug and, and its uh, it, it continued popularity is, is revolving around its safety. So it's the only oral that so far has not had a major safety issue in, in its continuum. Uh, in particular, the, the no PML, obviously. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, presentations that I will be giving at this meeting is the long-term safety and, and uh, uh, the importance is that the continued exposure to the drug has not revealed anything new. Uh, and uh, that's not an easy thing to say with the therapies that are out there only for a few years. So when you look at the original data set that was uh, generated in 2001 and we continued to collect data on that group, uh, some of these patients have been on the drug for more than a decade and uh, we've seen nothing new in terms of toxicities or surprises. So I think that's still an important message and the longer you go uh, and, and not see any uh, problems uh, in today's world, that's probably a good thing. The other major uh, presentation with regards to Baggio here is a reanalysis of uh, some of the MRI metrics. So in particular, uh, all the MRI data from the TEMSO study was positive with the exception of brain volume changes. Brain volume measurements are uh, I don't want to get into the, the details of it, but it's, it's a, a difficult thing to do when you're talking about fractions of 1% change over time. Uh, and it's so much methodology based. So the, the MRIs uh, in the study were uh, analyzed and done by the University of Texas in Houston. And they have their own methodology. So you go with whatever the group is, is doing. Uh, over the years, a, a software program, a methodology for assessing brain volumes become known as the Siena method based on Siena. Siena was uh, um, uh, adopted by uh, Nicola De Stefano, he's evolved from Doug Arnold's group in Montreal, and they did brain volume changes uh, uh, a different way. They, they measure brain volume. So uh, just to take you back a little bit, there was a precedent for this some years ago when uh, Tiva had uh, some analysis done of the studies done with glutamine acetate. It was not positive. Uh, they went back, used exactly the same data, but used a different software package and saw that using the Sienna method, suddenly there's a, a change in brain volume that you can measure. So we've done exactly the same thing. Uh, although the initial uh, TEMSO data showed no effect on delaying brain atrophy with Abagio, uh, when you reanalyze it now using a different methodology, the Siena method, we in fact see a substantial change in brain atrophy, uh, delay, a reduction in response to using Abagio. I think that's an important message. There is no gold standard for measuring brain atrophy. It's kind of like uh, the chefs of the world trying to tell you the right recipe for whatever. Uh, they all have their own little nuance. So until I think the MRI uh, cartel decides to tell us exactly what the methodology should be and proves that there's a certain methodology that is best, I think we'd have to continue to explore the different methods. And, and, I, and this is telling us what we have perceived all along, that uh, Baggio is an effective medication uh, and it's mirrored by effects on MRI, including now brain atrophy, which now is important because it's the only oral drug that in both phase three studies uh, has had an effect on disability progression. You raise an important point that I think we need to talk about in general, and that is these atrophy data are, are generated because you've got hundreds of patients in an arm to be able to measure. So this is group-generated data. Uh, when, it, when you try to file it down to the patient who's sitting in front of you, how much brain am I going to lose or not lose, um, it's very difficult to say because this is not uh, something that we can measure routinely with our patients. I think it's more important when you consider all the um, attributes of a, of a drug, what, what has it been able to show? Uh, we're, we're trying uh, to get at the heart of the disease 
and, and that is to slow or prevent disease progression. These all look at other endpoints, relapse rate reduction, mirrored usually by anti-inflammatory effects on MRI. We hope they all go in the right direction. Uh, this, is a, this, this drug has shown in both major studies that it slows disease clinical progression, and so now it's mirrored by um, two MRI uh, correlates of disease progression. One is an effect on T1 hypointensities, and we've shown that in the past with the TEMSO study. And now this other component, the brain atrophy, which follows along the T1 hypointensities and the, and the, and the disability progression, now it's a full house.